What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Instincts Culture. I'm Denise Salcedo, and my guest for today is a 13-time tag team champion in WWE and former WWE champion, the New Day Zone, Kofi Kingston. What's up, Kofi? Yeah, what's up? How are you? I'm doing really good. You know, I was very excited when I found out I was going to talk to you this week, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm feeling this. Let's do this. Oh, fantastic. Look at your background. I can't stop leaving. Look at all the paraphernalia you got back there. Wow. You know what? Triple H's crown. You got what, some New Japan back. Oh, my goodness gracious. You are a fan, for real. You know, it really makes me happy because not a lot of guests have pointed out my background yet. You're actually the first, so it makes me excited. Yeah. I'm like, oh, oh, you actually see my background. Yay. <laughs> yeah, come on. I, I'm always about that background. I'm actually embarrassed right now. I was telling you earlier, I'm trying to, I was waiting to check into my hotel, and uh, they would have had like a really, a much better backdrop than this. Unfortunately, my room's not ready, so here we are in the car, you know? No, so. <laughs> I don't mind it. Life on the road, it is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. Awesome. So, Kofi, let's go ahead and jump into this interview. So, this Sunday, Elimination Chamber, you're back. You know, considering that Kofi Mania was born out of you being a last minute replacement into the Elimination Chamber and sort of being a last replacement into this Elimination Chamber, you know, how does it feel to just once a be once again be in the spot? It feels real familiar. I'll tell you that. It feels real familiar uh, when uh, Adam Pierce, uh, Mr. Pierce, you know, as I like to call him, he said that there's going to be an Elimination Chamber full of former WWE champions. I was sitting there waiting for my call. You know, and uh, it never it never happened, you know, uh, but here we are, you know, somehow fate has a funny way of uh, kind of correcting things and, and making things right. So I'm just happy to be in one of the pods uh, this year. And, um, you know, I think it's going to be fun. It's it's probably one of the most like, I guess, like high caliber in terms of um, like the clout you have in there. All these former WWE champions, everybody in there like deserves to be there. Everybody in there has proven themselves because they've been at the top of the industry. So um, for me to be in there and mix it up with those guys, um, that's the kind of match that you want. You know, as a performer, you want to be in there with all the best, you know? So um, this is going to be one that I'd have to earn for sure. Anybody in there is going to have to earn it. So um, I think it's going to be a fun one. And you're obviously no stranger to Elimination Chambers. You've been in several now. So I kind of want to ask because the structure is very, very, you know, compelling. It's very exciting to see even just as a fan, but to be in there is a totally different experience. So what is it like to be in a chamber? What are some of, and what are some of the challenges that you face as a performer? You know what? It's um, I was just talking about this in, a, in another interview, but it's you know that you're going to leave in pain because everything in there, there's no give, like the chains out there are like, they're pulled like real tight. There's no give whatsoever. Um, so I was saying like a, like a cage match is a little bit different because the, I feel like there's a little bit of give with the ring and the weight of the, the, the opponents, you know, hitting the cage. There's always like a little bit of give. It's still pretty painful, but the elimination chamber, there's no give whatsoever. Like every time that you hit the ground, it just, it hurts. But your adrenaline is what kind of like keeps you through. Now it'll be different because we don't have like the energy of the live crowd there, but we do have the, uh, the Thunderdome and we, have, we can see people on the screens, which really does help. And I'm sure everyone loves to get to see a live show. So um, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a really, really fun one. Like I said, just a uh, top tier talent in every single pod. So it's going to be intense the entire time through. So um, it's going to be really fun. Especially coming off of a broken jaw, though. Like, what's your mentality yeah. going into this? Like, you're, you know, you're coming off of broken jaw. What, what are your thoughts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's still pretty intense because it's funny because I, I feel like I'm not 100% healed yet. My, my jaw is still, like, off kilter, and I talk, like, my S's come out of the side of my mouth. So my, it's still, like, just a little uneven, but the specialist said that over time it should just, like, kind of shift back into place, and it's been going little by little, but... um. You know, um, it, it's almost like uh, people ask a lot, like, if you get scared being a high flyer, like, do you think about falling when you get up there? You think about hitting the ground and crashing? And the answer is no, because if you start thinking about the pain that you're going to experience, then you start experiencing that pain. So um, I, I don't I'm just trying not to think about, you know, the, the, the my jaw and the uh, the injury there. Um, so I don't know. It's just a matter of, uh, just mentally preparing and, um, 
just going out there and doing it. Like, even if I didn't have a broken jaw, I'm sure my face would still hurt after the match. So, you know what I mean? So it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> you're like, I'm just getting it warmed up. But Kofi, you're one yeah. of my favorite competitors to see in an Elimination Chamber match because you're the person who does like really cool stuff, like very unique stuff inside the match. And it's always very exciting to see what you do, especially given your athletic ability. So do you kind of do things like spur of the moment? Or how do you come up? You're like, oh, that would be so cool to try. Uh, how does that all work out? It's a little bit of everything. Um, I, I know what the structure is going to look like. So, um, so ironically, uh, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, they had this steel structure where they had people in there and competing. It was very similar to the Elimination Chamber. Uh, and now here we are in what we call Thunderdome and we're in this structure. So I just like, you know, I always get a lot of inspiration from, you know, like movies and, um, you know, martial arts and, and things of that nature. Um, but looking at it, it's almost like a playground for me because there's a lot of stuff that I, luckily I'm agile enough to be able to climb up pretty quickly and jump off of things. Uh, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't, but, um, you know, so I, I'm thinking about all of that, but you have no idea what scenario is going to arise once you get in there. Uh, you prepare for everything, you expect everything, um, and, you know, usually it provides with some pretty memorable moments. So I'm looking to do just that, just, uh, trying to figure out exactly how I can use the, the, the structure to my advantage because I feel like I have a little bit more of an advantage than a lot of the people that are in there. Now, they bring a lot of different things to the table, um, you know, but um, I bring some stuff to the table too. So we'll see. We'll see what, uh, what happens, what kind of meal we can make when we all come through and we all put our ingredients in the pot. You know, I'm sure that the, uh, the WWE universe is going to be real pleased. I swear, anytime I see you do something, I'm like on the edge of my seat. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, is this is this gonna go well? Like, is this gonna go well? And it's like a palm sweating and everything, but it always, you know, it always looks really awesome. It's really fun to see. So Kofi, this obviously brings me to my question. And a lot of people are asking, will we be seeing Kofi Mania 2? So what are your thoughts on this and just sort of like the fans and what they're saying and all of that? It's funny because I feel like we're partially guilty of that because we we said that in our uh, our segment uh, the other day. But thinking about it, I, like Kofi Mania, and it's so uncool when it comes out of my mouth. I say that every time. Like it, when you guys say it, awesome. But coming out of my mouth, I just sound <laughs> really silly. But um, it was uh, such an incredible moment, and and not just the actual moment at WrestleMania, but like leading up to it was just picture perfect. You know, um, I, I couldn't have asked for a better build to get to a WrestleMania WWE title match. Um, and, and the support that I got from the fans was uncanny. Um, I can't believe that uh, even still to this day that so many people like wanted it to happen as badly as I did. And, and to hear the people chanting my name throughout the entire show, you know, on both shows on Raw and SmackDown, just in anticipation of me getting to have that match. And I think it was only like a week or two weeks before WrestleMania that we actually like Woods and E won the gauntlet match after I went through a couple. Um, and, and then it became real, you know, and, and even um, just like before the match, I, I still didn't fully believe like that it was going to happen, you know, <laughs> like I wanted it to happen so badly, but I, I, whether it's because I, I'm jaded or not, I don't know, but I've been around the industry so long that I know things change at the drop of a hat. And, um, you know, I try not to get my hopes up for anything. Uh, but when the moment happened, it was just like, just, uh, it provided so much hope for so many people. And I'm just so humbled that I was at the center of that moment. Obviously, a lot of people had a lot to do with it. The people in general, the WWE universe, again, without them and their strong desire for it to happen, it probably wouldn't have happened without Xavier and Big E supporting me and us forming the new day and being able to go out and entertain on a weekly basis. Um, if they're not there, it doesn't happen. You know, my wife and kids were in the crowd. If the sacrifices that they, you know, if they don't make the sacrifices that they make, then I'm not able to do any of this. So then it doesn't happen. Um, there's just so many like serendipitous moments that, that all came together. And I think that really made Kofi Mania hate saying it, but I, it made it, it made it special. It made it like really, really unique and special. Um, so I don't think that anything, whether I do it or anybody else does it will ever really truly replicate what happened, you know, but uh, I will say for myself, 
I'm always striving to become just a better performer. And, um, you know, at the end of the, uh, at the end of my career, I want to be able to look back and say that I did some really cool things with WWE and in this industry and, uh, being a multiple time world champion, I think would be a, uh, pretty cool thing to add to the list. So I'm just always trying to climb and attain as much as I can while I'm able to do it. I've got to say, you know, I was, I was at WrestleMania 35. So I got to like be in the crowd, just this like tiny pebble person with all these sea of yeah. people. So I can only imagine like what that moment must have felt for you and just like feeling it all happen. And just, just talking about like the monumental moment that that was for you. How did you feel, you know, seeing all the love from your peers, from the fans, just knowing that it was just all, you know, like, you know, just held up in this moment. It was just humbling. Again, um, I, I feel like sometimes you go into a match and you have, you know, for me, I've, I've been a good guy for the, mo the majority of my career. Um, but some places you go and you have people who want to try to be cool and they want to go boo the good guys and cheer for all the bad guys. So you sometimes go out there and you know it's going to be like a mixed bag of reactions. Uh, but for me, that day, I feel like everybody was supportive, you know? everybody was on the same page um everybody from um the wwe universe to the people uh you know on the roster smackdown and raw roster all my peers um like everybody wanted for it to happen so it's very uh very humbling and very emotional that people again like would support me for all for, for that much at that level um and i think it's really kind of an uh, attribute to just the the struggle right like i it was a legitimate 11 year journey like it wasn't like someone came up to me and said hey you know what we're not going to have you sniff the wwe championship title you're not even going to be in the picture for 11 years but on the 11th year we're going to pull the trigger it's going to be this big moment that's not what happened like i wasn't supposed to be there you know if ali doesn't get hurt i don't get to be in the gauntlet match i don't get to be in elimination chamber and i don't get the fan support like i got so everything kind of happened for a reason and you know um to, to again to to see that this great moment happened when it really wasn't supposed to is just it blows my mind even still like it's it's crazy and um uh, it was just such a big moment to be able to inspire so many people because at the end of the day that's what we like as wwe superstars should be doing we should be you know motivating people to go out and and live their dreams because i'm living my my best life i'm living my childhood dream and there's not a lot of people out there that can say that so um, again, just to be the, the people, the person that, you know, little African-American boys and girls can look to as the example of, man, he did this. He looks like me. I can do it too. And then even beyond race, like just, you know, he struggled for 11 years. I've been struggling at my job and I haven't been appreciated, man. But if I stick in there and I keep on working, then maybe I can attain great things because he did it. So maybe I can do it too. So I think that, um, again, just being the source of that, that motivation is, uh, it's humbling um, and it just, it, it feels good to be able to just, you know, push people in the direction of achieving their dreams because there's nothing better than going to a, a, a quote unquote job and having it feel like fun. Like, like I'm, I'm, I'm literally playing every day. I'm with my best friends. I'm having a great time and um, doing what I always wanted to do. So um, yeah, it's just, it's still, it's still pretty crazy. And it's hard to believe that it was, you know, two years ago, almost two years ago that, uh, that it all happened and all went down. But um, yeah, just very grateful to be at the center of that moment for sure. Time flies and it's just so crazy. Like you mentioned, I'm like one thing happens, leads to another, leads to another. I mean, it's crazy. So I do have to ask you though, uh, one of the recent stories is, you know, Biggie getting separated from yourself and Xavier Woods. So for you as a close friend of his, somebody that's worked with him for a very, very long time, how important do you think it was for Biggie to sort of go off on his own and, you know, do his work his own path? Very important, very important. Um, you know, we always talk about uh, like the fact that we will never break up. You know, we talk about that uh, if <laughs> we'll have one uh, grave site that we just all get thrown in the same coffin and we get buried together because we'll never break up. And um, I'm so glad that, um, you know, initially when I heard that the, he was going to SmackDown and we were going to be on Raw, I was, I was kind of hot. I was, I was kind of upset. But, you know, after I sat back and thought about it, it really is something that he deserves because, um, you know, one should not have to battle for 
a decade before getting your due. And when you talk about Ian, him checking off boxes and him having what it takes to be the face of a company, like he's got a look, you know, he's probably the strongest person on the roster. He can talk, he can make you laugh. He can make you scared. He's amazing in the ring. He's incredibly agile. He shouldn't be able to move like that being so big, but he does, you know, um, he's entertaining and people gravitate to his energy. Like, so, so that's, I mean, he checks off all the boxes and then some, so for him to like have a shot, um, like he deserves that. He deserves that, you know, he's worked for that and myself and Wood support him in full. And for us, like a lot of people are like, oh, well, you guys are split up. And it's like, yeah, we're not there together. Like physically, we're not on the same show, but we're still the new day. You know, we're still boys. We still, you know, want the best for each other. So while E goes over to SmackDown and starts dominating over there, or should I say continues to dominate as he is the intercontinental champion and me and Woods do our thing over on Raw and we, you know, gain accolades and build ourselves up. By the time we all come back together and we conglomerate, it's, um, you know, we've all lifted each other up. You know, and that's always been the point of the group is to uplift each other. And by doing that, you know, you uplift the individuals, too. So, um, yeah, it's it's awesome. It's great to see E out there holding his own, you know, and I we all knew he could do it. Myself and Woods knew he could do it. We knew he was fully capable. But to see the world actually be like, oh, wow, he's able to he's able to hold his own out there. It's it's awesome. It's awesome. And this is only the beginning for him. He's just scratch the surface of his uh his potential so um yeah excited to see it excited for him for sure exactly you nailed it right there it's only the beginning now having worked in wwe for quite some time now kofi what are some of the things that you're like i still want to do this in wwe or i'd like to work with this person like what are some of your goals left you know uh there we are in this era where we have so much talent so much incredible talent between um our roster even nxt um, the, the, the talent, the roster is deep with talent. And, um, for me to put a finger on like exactly who I'd want to work is impossible because there's so many, so many talented individuals. I mean, you talk about, Al, Al, uh, Adam Cole, I almost said Alan Cole, who was that? <laughs> Adam Cole, obviously. Um, he's really, really good. I mean, um, Leon Ruff, you know what I'm saying? Oh, he's like, fun, he's yeah. awesome. Like, I, I love his story. Uh, there's just like so many people who I would just love to be able to get in there and um and have a have an incredible match with and have a great story to tell with um it's yeah it's the it's it's endless it's endless uh and um yeah the 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 work is never done the work is never done i, I said this in a different interview is like when you think that you would think that after winning one wwe championship that you know you would be all set it's like okay well i did it i'm good and then you just kind of fade off and it's like no it's almost like it's it's addictive because you want to be at the top as long as you can and as many times as you can. So um, obviously at the Elimination Chamber um, this Sunday, I have a chance to become a two-time WWE champion. And um, I can't wait for that. I can't wait for that chance. I can't wait to be able to, uh, to you know, like I said, kind of kind of run it back and, um, and do it one more time because <laughs> what's better than being a WWE champion is being a multiple time WWE champion. So it's uh yeah man I, I just I just go to work every day and I try to get the most out of everything that I do and by doing that you know you just keep yourself climbing that that ladder and you keep on you stay hungry even after over a decade I'm still I'm still hungry you know what I mean so yes. um the work is never done the work is never done Awesome. Kofi, we do have a couple minutes left, so I am going to go ahead and ask you a yeah. few questions in our lightning round game. So I'm going to ask them to you. You answer them as fast as you can, and let's just have oh, fun. Boy. Here we go. Lightning round with Kofi Kingston. Question number mm -hmm. one. What is your favorite and least favorite city to travel to? Favorite city to travel to was uh, Nîmes, France. It was a coliseum, and we wrestled outside like gladiators, except we were in a ring wrestling, and, and we left with our lives, so that was cool. Uh, least favorite city to travel to. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble for this, but I will say New York, not because of the people, not because of the people. It's just that it's, it's too fast. Everybody <laughs> is beeping their horns. It's cool for like five minutes and then you get there and then everybody's angry and they're telling me to get out of the way and it's too stressful. And then I'm driving this traffic. So I don't, I don't like, I, I love New Yorkers, but traveling in New York is, it's too stressful on my life. Question number two, would you rather be able to talk to land animals, animals that fly or animals that live under the water? 
Ooh, I would talk to animals that live under the water because there's so much undiscovered territory down there that we don't know about. And I would ask them to swim down there and see what else is going on. Like, is, is the Loch Ness Monster real? I don't know. Are there dinosaurs down there? I don't know. Tell me what's down there. I need to know. Yes, definitely the, the, the sea animals for sure. And I can't swim either. So I can't go in there and find out myself. So yeah. We need the answers. Question number three, <laughs> if you could enter into any world of any video game, which would it be? Oh, Final Fantasy, I think. Good Final one. Fantasy, yep. Question number four, you're in an arcade. What is your go-to game? Mortal Kombat, any of them. Preferably two or three, but any of them. Question number five, if you had your very own TV show, which music artist would you want to sing your intro song? Ooh, which, Jimi Hendrix. Ooh, that would be yep. good. Question mm -hmm. number six, would you rather give up bathing for a month or give up the internet for a month? Give up bathing or give up the internet? Uh, for a month. I'll give up bathing, sure. <laughs> I, don't, I got no one to impress, I'm already married, <laughs> you know? I got nobody to impress. Question number seven, are there any habits you have that you're trying to break? Uh, biting my nails Ooh, and saying, awesome. um, I say, um, a lot, which you'll probably see in this interview. I say, uh, uh, I'm trying to break it, but I can't, and I can't stop biting my nails either. I feel you on both of those, actually. <laughs> Question number eight, what's your favorite breakfast item? Gotta be pancakes, babe. That's, you know, that's our thing, so pancakes, yeah. Of course. Question number nine. Have you ever fallen asleep or walked out during a movie at a uh, movie theater? Always fall asleep in movie theaters. I'm always tired, um, especially having kids now. A lot of the times when we go to the movies, I'm like, oh, great, I get to sleep. So I'll just go and sleep and get some, uh, catch some Zs, yeah. <laughs> Last question, question number 10. If you could take credit for creating, this includes writing and directing any movie, which one would it be? Oh, The Big Lebowski. It's my favorite movie of all time. Uh, it's humorous. You watch it. You, you, you hear, you, you, you see new things every time. Every time I watch the movie, I get a new funny anecdote for sure. Big Lebowski. Yes. Awesome. Kofi, I swear I can chat with you all day <laughs> long and do like a hundred of these questions, but I want to appreciate you for taking the time out of your day to come and talk to me today. Before we go, where can people follow you on social media and feel free to plug in anything you'd like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can follow me on the uh, the Instagram at the true Kofi, T-H-E-T-R-U-E-K-O-F-I or on the Twitter at true Kofi, just true Kofi. And uh, we got a podcast out. Yes, that's right. It's called The New Day feel the power you can catch it on all your streaming you know spotify and apple uh tv and all you just just look it up just look it up everything it's uh it's it's really tight it's really tight so yeah awesome thank you so much kofi thank you to everyone watching please do not forget to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more and do not miss the elimination chamber this sunday on the wwe network until next time i'm denise salcedo this is kofi kingston and we'll see you guys later bye everyone right on peace